are we allowed to talk about our our new baby that we possibly could be coming out here shortly? This could be the the launch of it, but we can always you know throw some Easter eggs out. I already kind of threw one out a little bit on the outdoor podcast with Dave and Tim. We just won't go into hyper detail, you yeah. know, just a little bit. But I mean, so basically, we are coming out with a. Uh, you know, I would say an industry disruptor a little bit. I'm not going to say the name of it, but. Welcome to the Range Podcast. I'm Ricky Bruley, and with me is Jake Hollywood Iverson. Join us at the Archery Range, where we'll tell stories from the hunt, discuss technical bow shooting tactics and gear, and pick the brains of some of the most successful people to ever shoot a bow. Whether you're about to shoot that X for the win or send an arrow at a trophy buck, this podcast is for you. Range Podcast is brought to you by Vapor Trail Archery, makers of the best bowstrings money can buy, originators of limb-driven arrow rest technology, and innovators of stokerized stabilizer systems. All right, everybody, welcome to the range. I'm Ricky Bruley here with Jake Hollywood Iverson. What is up, y'all? Hey. (laughs) Thank you all for joining us for episode two, the present and future of Vapor Trail Archery and stokerized stabilizers. Joining us today in the range is Rory O'Loughlin, president and CEO. What's going on, man? How are you? Doing great. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah, man. How was, uh, how was the weekend? Would you do anything fun? Uh, yeah. Uh, four-year-old daughter had her, uh, mm. her birthday, so uh, got to go to Dave & Buster's <laughs> and blast some zombies with a machine gun. <laughs> it was her first time. I thought she was going to be running out of the game crying. She was like into it. So that's awesome. She was like, another another round, Dad, another round. She's all for shooting. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. No nightmares. I mean, yeah, that I'm might pretty be sure up. if she does, she'll have a machine gun in her hands. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's perfect then. Mm-hmm. Right? Sweet, dude. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, I spent the weekend um, helping. Well, I was here for the Fondy shoot, of course, for like the first half. Hollywood mm-hmm. was here for the whole whole day. <laughs> the whole half. Um, yeah, I got, nice. got the joys of the whole thing. Um I was kind of bummed that I couldn't be here the whole day, but then uh, I spent all of Sunday helping my buddy put rip carpeting up in his basement and put new flooring in. So mm, I'm does like that bring back some memories? Super sore. I gotta say that's a good workout. Oh man, my it's knees, like, dude. My even my toes. Weird. A year ago, a lot of dead. We were doing too. that here, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> that's right. We were drywalling, and we'll get yeah. into that some more. So I'm kind yeah. of excited about that, but. All right, cool. Well, we just wanted to do a quick recap from episode one, uh, touch on a few details that we missed out on. Uh, You know, there were some things we talked about that maybe some of our listeners wanted some more details on. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Feel free to jump in, you guys, anytime if you have a comment or anything you want to say. And again, I'm going to kind of be reading this verbatim just so I don't miss anything. I apologize if I start to sound too robotic. But uh, so... In the beginning, Jared he started uh, Jared Fondy started Vapor Trail in his basement in 1993. As a target shooter, he began to build his own bowstring, so he had more control over his equipment. Steve made a really interesting comment too about how um, back then, you know, strings stretched so much, and they actually wanted them to stretch. Mm-hmm. And then they later come to find out that okay, that's not such a good thing, especially for target shooters. And then I was listening to that episode with Cameron Haynes and Wayne Endicott. And they were talking about how it was it was so bad that you get to the point where you got your bow tuned and then you wouldn't want to shoot it again for you know until like you absolutely until needed kill to. shot basically. Oh my gosh! Because wow. it would it was that bad. I was like I was just shocked by that. So that was kind of cool. Uh, by 2000, things uh, really start to take off with a big contract from Bowtech. Jared's brother Steve gets on board and VT is officially incorporated. Going back to the previous episode, we talked about a gentleman by the name of uh, Paul Gotzi, and that's kind of we missed a part of that where uh, Paul met Jared and then, so he had a connection with Bowtech. So Paul Gotzi had that connection. That's where that, um, uh, that's where that all took place and how that all happened. VTX bowstring material is born and was the first of its kind with its proprietary combination of Dyneema and Vectran fibers. So what they, what he did was it was basically just different deniers playing around with different combinations of, you know, percentages of those two materials and then, uh, came up with a, uh, with a, st- it's a little thicker per strand. So we run a 16 strand string as opposed to your typical, like 22, 24, whether you're using 452 or whatever you're using. So those are s- a little more details I wanted to get on that. 
What, what's the benefits of that? Through testing and all of that, he found that it held up better in varying weather conditions. So nice. one example that he told me about is when he would uh, go to tournaments down south and you're, you know, in the winter, right? So you're, you're up here shooting in the cold uh, and then you go down there and you're, you know, you're in the heat and then everything would move and everybody would be on the range, reciting in, making adjustments, you know, all that kind of stuff. And with the VTX, he just, he never had to do that. That's awesome. Very rarely did he have to really make too many moves. His peep would still be coming back straight the way that he wanted it and, and everything. So that's what they found is it held up better in varying weather conditions. Nice. So moving on, uh, VT moves into their first facility in 2003, small office space with remote building stations all over the state. Uh, Steve was saying that they, he had, they had cousins, family members all over the place building because they had so much that they had to do. They'd drive all the way up to the Iron Range, which is like four or five hours away, to pick up tied or laid out um, strings, bring them back down here, and then they'd get them served up on the machines down here. And then uh, Jared invents limb-driven technology in 2005, and the limb driver Aero Rust was born. 2006, I started working for Vapor Trail as a part-time bowstring builder, later then became their graphic designer. We moved on to uh, become the bowstring manager, then production manager, and now creative director and special operations about to say, can't manager. Forget special ops. Can't forget that part. Spec ops. It's a very important role. I come walking in with night vision goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. I Looking mean, that's through. it's that uh, level of expertise needed. That's for sure for some of the stuff you you got working on. You know. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, where are we at here? So, 2007 operation moves to a 3,000 square foot facility down the road. I had been say, saying 2,500, but I guess it's 3,000. Uh, so, just wanted to throw that tidbit in there. 2011, Jared Ears Meyer comes on as general manager, plays a critical role in the development of the brand with his good looks and superb beard. <laughs> He does, it's just crazy. It's like so perfect, perfect. all the time. Yeah, but he's got to keep it all prim and proper now with his new job. So, yeah. 2014, the legend Jared Fondy passes, and we continue to push forward despite a huge loss to the archery industry. In 2016, John Becker, former Olympic ski jumping medalist, <laughs> joins the team as sales and marketing director, adding further growth to the business with his genuine and kind-hearted nature. He is now our uh, director of operations. January 2020, Rory and his brother Patrick acquire Vapor Trail. So that brings us kind of up to speed to the basically the end of the conversation we had with Steve. So we just kind of want to go back a bit, um, talk about when this process first started of you acquiring Vapor Trail, and um, and just kind of see, you know, get your thoughts on that, how it felt, what it was like, the whole process. Yeah. Um, well, as you guys know, I'm from uh, the North uh, Texas area, so. Um, that's where I met my wife. She uh, uh, was a nurse at Parkland Hospital, which is the same one uh, JFK was brought to after he was assassinated. Um, mm. And wow. we, uh, anyway, we're volunteering at a dog rescue, and uh, that's how we met. So we're, um, obviously things worked out. We uh, had a kid. It was the first year of having our daughter. And... Um, she wanted to move back to family. And so, as you guys know, it's a small world. Mm-hmm. My, my wife is from Ham Lake, Minnesota, yep. which happens to be uh, where um, uh, Vapor Trail was stationed for over a decade and was uh, where, where it was when we purchased it. Um, so just a small world in the sense that uh, my wife and Vapor Trail are from the same city. And, and I so, live there, too. Yeah. Oh. Well, there you go. Yeah. It's, that's why it's a special place in my heart. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I was doing commercial finance in North Texas and uh, was not going to start all over again. So I was like, you know what? Um, you know, I've been entrepreneurial uh, most of my life. That's the reason I worked with entrepreneurs. I loved it. Um, oh, geez. I think the very first, like, entrepreneurial, like, pat on the back I got was, when I was in Boy Scouts, um, we had a, mm. a popcorn raising like uh, competition, and I remember I was like, you know what, I'm I'm gonna win this thing, and <laughs> so I asked my dad to help me. He was I think it was like a Sunday, um, and he was like, sure, hop in the truck. So I hop in the truck. He brings a six pack with him <laughs> um, because it's Texas, and you know I'm kind of older, and mm. it's totally legal 
uh, at that time period where you can just drink and drive around, which he took me from like um, neighbor to neighbor um, in this, you know, horse country neighborhood and uh he was listening to texas rangers the whole time drinking beer (laughs) and he would send me to the front porch and we would uh i would just sell popcorn so yeah um i got a a sweet popcorn hat yeah for for all of your work yeah for doing most of the sales yeah (laughs) yeah shout out to uh pack pack 262 den six there you go yeah if you're still out there there you go. So anyway, that's awesome. I didn't know you're a Boy Scout. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Long time. Uh, so anyway, um, I you know uh, always uh, was entrepreneurial. Worked with entrepreneurs, and so uh, I was like, you know what? It's time to you know own my own business. And so when we moved to Ham Lake, obviously I, I met Steve, and uh, we were talking back and forth about you know Vapor Trail and how he was um, a little bit burned out. I think, I think uh, you know, not to go into too many details, but I think uh, the passing of Jared had a lot to do with it. And, yeah. You know, um, definitely a rough time for him and his family. And so um, I think he was ready to let Vapor Trail go into the hands of um, someone else that was passionate and dedicated to mm-hmm. keeping the brand alive and making sure that... Um, that flame continues. Right. So yeah. Hopefully I I bring uh somewhat of that to Vapor Trail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean honestly I I um have to thank you for keeping us on, right? Because all the offers they had on the table where they were just like they just wanted to come in, move the operation, get rid of everybody, just fresh, clean slate, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, know? vulture style. Yeah. They, they're you, coming in to dismantle. Yeah. Yeah. You came in trusting us blindly. You know what I mean? And I, and, and I'm sure there's some of that had to do with, you know, just, you know, Steve, maybe, to, you know, talking to you about how important we were to the business, but at the same time still like, I, so I thank you for that, for still being here. Yeah, absolutely. Here we are talking, yeah. you know, in a podcast. So wouldn't have seen that coming, but, uh, super grateful and, and feel blessed to be here still. So yeah, me as well. No, it's a great family, uh, that we've all built here and, uh, uh, the culture is amazing. So, mm-hmm. But I'm glad to be a part of it. Right. So when you were like the details about how it all kind of came about, like where, um, how did you find out that Steve was selling it or how did you get connected with what I call the Steve's Steve Fondy and, and, uh, Steve Weiss, Steve right. Weiss. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like they have like, <clears throat> um, real estate agents or brokers mm-hmm. uh, for real estate. They have them for uh, businesses. And yeah. so I was in touch with, uh, one that was national. Okay. Uh, he was on the buy side, which, you know, I would be technically a buyer. And so he, uh, had a handful of companies in the MSP area and uh, he's going, we're going down the list and he goes, this is archery one. I don't know if you'd be interested in like my eyes lit up. And like, what? <laughs> yeah. Right. I'd have done the same. Yeah. You know, me being a, a bow hunter since I was a kid, I was, uh, all of a sudden super jazzed about the opportunity. And honestly, it was so weird during the process because the whole time, like this course is too good to be true. It's not going to work out. Right. You know, something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, these things fall apart all times. So right. Like, I was, I was like that all the way up to the closing table. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, wow, it really happened. This is really cool. Yeah. 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 It was a, it was kind of a wild day. It was a Friday and we're all just getting ready to, you know, I think it was like two o'clock or something and we usually would leave at three. So we're just like getting, getting ready, getting cleaned two, up. Two days after new, the new year too. Yeah. So January, January 3rd. 3rd. Yeah. 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 So we're, it was a Friday, right? Yeah. January 3rd, 2020. Yeah. So it's just like all of a sudden Steve's like, Hey, you, you let's go. We're leaving now. We're like, what? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so me and ears and Johnny pile into his truck and drive down to the was it a Holiday Inn Express, yeah, I think, the new one? Really fancy. Right there behind where Gander Mountain <laughs> mm-hmm. used to be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and meanwhile, this whole time, you know, we're all just kind of like, oh, Sounds what's like going a backdoor deal did. going on back there. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh man, we're, we're going into this. <laughs> I was the bar across the street, for the record. And that then we just bricks. closed like that morning. And, you know, <clears throat> they, I guess Steve, the Steves were running late, you know, getting you guys there. Um, and so I, I was just remember, I was like, man, uh, you know, these guys, I have no clue what they're going to think of me as their new boss. And so I'm like, you know, just sitting there 
you know, drinking a few Jamesons mm-hmm. just to relax, to, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. get to know you guys. Yeah. I mean, I have to admit too, when, so when we finally get into like this little conference room, right. And I'm just like, man, I don't know. I could go either way. I don't know. I might be losing my job right now or I have no idea, no <laughs> yeah. clue. Right. It's just, and then, so then they, they break it to us what's going on. So I'm expecting a suit, right? Like, Oh yeah. You know, like a, like a guy in his fifties, private equity nerd. Yeah. Like, you know, silver Fox, you know, groomed really well. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then you walk in badass leather jacket, you know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, Jeans wearing on. a baseball cap. So I'm like, Hmm. All right. You know, and like, this is okay. You know, let's we'll see how this goes and everything. And yeah, the conversation went well. And, and, uh, you know, I don't know. I, it, it was honestly a huge relief because okay. I just didn't know. Good. I was like, what's going to happen here? You yeah. Know? I, <laughs> Because you said once you left the finance world, that was it with the suit and tie, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I threw them all out. I, I think <laughs> I have, I think, a total of two. One yeah. for weddings and one for funerals. It's just like, yeah. there yeah. we go. Ho- yeah. Hopefully I use them uh, for the first ones, not the latter. Right. Now you can relax <clears throat> with us blue-collar boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was yeah. good. I, I was just, again, so... Um, just like, all right, all right, well, this is gonna, this is gonna be cool. Let's see how you know, and still a little guarded, but you know, you just of course, yeah. You know, it's like from Texas, you know, it's a, it's almost a, it's a little bit of a different world there than it is up here, you know. Mm-hmm. So then it's just like, all right, we'll see how this goes. But uh, so, I just wanted to ask, like, your first impression on on the Steves. Like, what did you? I mean, Steve and I, as in Fondy, uh, we, you know, we were pin pals back and forth. Mm-hmm. You know, if I had questions, I'd give him a call or, mm-hmm. you know, shoot him emails, stuff like that. And I actually just met him uh, for the first time uh, when I was coming up to do some bow hunting in Wisconsin mm-hmm. um, in November with uh, my father-in-law. And, uh, you know, they're rifle hunters. I've always been the, the lonely bow hunter during rifle season in Wisconsin. What the hell am I thinking, man? But anyway, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a private land and it's, a, you know, uh, over a couple hundred acres. So it's an invite, right? It's a new place to hunt. So mm. um, I was doing that for like six years uh, before uh, I met Steve. I was at, I'd always come up. That was the cool thing about um, my wife, you know, having uh, a really cool father-in-law. That was the way we bonded, you know. Yeah. Um, so... Anyway, um, yeah, we sat down at a bar and um, had a few Guinnesses, and and we, you know, finally got to uh, really know each other. Just you know, not just um, business, but on a personal level too. So it was pretty cool. And you know, I was like, "All right, man. Well, we got like a month and a half to go. Do you have any reservations?" He's, <laughs> he's like, "No, you're a bow hunter. You're you're a nice guy. You, we're good. We're doing this." I was like, "Okay, cool. right on, man. That's cool. That's awesome." Uh, so everybody's got, had the opportunity to kind of meet Steve Fondy. Uh, but as far as like, I have a, uh, a, a, a good story about Steve Weiss and he was tech, he was technically like a consultant or right. Like, yeah. I don't know what the technical term would be yeah. or oh. his title or role in the, the go getter, the, but the business talker, I had met him long before. Like I met him right when I moved to Minneapolis and I just so happened to, when I moved here, I, I went on apartments.com and I, and I found a place to stay, a room to stay mm-hmm. uh, with a gentleman by the name of John Patchen. Really nice guy. Cool dude. I, I think he's an electronics engineer or something like that. I can't remember, but so Steve was really good buddies with him. Steve Weiss was. Yeah. And so I'm just like sitting in my house or sitting in my room, you know, and just kicking it. I don't doing whatever. And all of a sudden he shows up. So he, he was friends with John and he's like, yeah, so I heard you, uh, I heard you have a desert Eagle 50 Cal and I, d- I had won one at the Safari club international banquet that year. And so I was like, yeah, he was like, can I see it? I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? You know? So I had a little handgun safe and I pulled it out and just make, make sure the chamber was clear and everything. And I handed it off to him and it was really, he was just like, Whoa, this is sweet. You know, just like <laughs> watching him just like, you know, <laughs> pop the mag and jam it in. And he was just like, this thing is so cool. Mm-hmm. And so that was like the first time I ever met him. And then he just like hung out in my doorway and we just sat there and talked about guns for like an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then years later, right? Like I'm, 
so I start, I, I knew that there was like kind of a relationship there because I had a vapor trail sticker on my bow case. And mm-hmm. when John patch and my, the guy who owned the house was helping me move my stuff in, he goes, Oh, do you, do you know those guys? He goes, do you know fondles? And I'm like, fondles, who's that? And I hadn't met Steve and Jared yet. Mm-hmm. I knew about vapor trial, but I hadn't met them yet. So yeah. then he was like, well, they own, you know, Jared, Steve Fondy, they own. And I think that was the, the nickname he had for them or something like that. I've never heard anybody else call him that, but. So that, that's kind of the story. And then just crazy to think that however many years later, 14 years later, whatever it is that he was going to be a part of that transaction is wild. Yeah. I think consultants, the right uh, term for him because he was, you know, behind the HR documents too of vapor trail and what he helped on the 401k plan. And so he's always had his, his, his hand in a few of the, the inner workings of vapor trail behind the scenes. And every time, like I had a, like a very detailed business uh, question or regarded the finances or anything like that um, to Fonny. Fonny would be like, yeah, you need to talk to the other Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, I'll give him a shout. Yeah. Yeah. He helped me start my 401k too. So nice. Uh, all right. Well, so moving on, uh, things start to move really, really fast. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to lay out the situation here for everybody. So, uh, you buy the company We're we're already kind of in the process of starting to develop a new arrow rest. We've got one that we just finished up. Mm-hmm. COVID hits. Yeah. Gen seven X just came out yeah. and we were working on another one, which I can't say the name yet because yep. it's three years, three and a half years in the making now. Yeah. Yeah. And then sales go through the roof, right? Cause of COVID COVID hits and sales just go crazy. And then my daughter is going to be born. So I take three months off, you know, well, that was in August. So that was a little bit later. And, um, then one year in the opportunity to acquire Stoker eyes comes along. So it's just like all these things are happening like really, really, really fast. And I mean, not to mention the, in the craziness of COVID too. Yeah. And it's it, just like, you know, all of a sudden we're like really slow, you know, cause it just crept in from, China, you know, in December mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I think the official shutdowns were in March, March. And then, so we had a solid month, I think it was, you know, 30 days stay at home or two weeks, whatever it was. Yeah. And I just remember like it was being crickets during that time period. Mm-hmm. And then we all returned back to work and then all of a sudden just the phones explode. Just fire. So, and then boom, we're on the, the defensive, you yeah. know, all we're trying to do is keep up and keep our customers happy, our dealers happy. And mm-hmm. It was, uh, it was a awesome challenge. It was super fun. Um, definitely don't want to do it again because, <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely don't want to get, you know, three weeks behind on, on strings, you know, yeah. which, it, you know, we've come a, a long way, you know, now we're, uh, back to our three day guarantee and, uh, we have the production capacity and, uh, all the equipment put in place and people, uh, to make that happen. Yeah. And so for the folks that, uh, don't know, we used, well, we, we had a three day guarantee in the past. It was really a big part of our success. Mm -hmm. And, and for as many years as I've been here, we'd never, I don't think we'd ever gone beyond two days. Maybe we'd get like two and a half, but we'd always do whatever we had to do to make sure that the, that everything got done. And, um, it, but it was within reason, yeah. you know, and when that year hit, it was just there. We well, who was, no yeah. one was up to speed. Well, no, you know, no one could ship in three days. Right. I, I was just it gonna, was six months for some yeah. of our competitors or, um, other, you know, archery manufacturers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was it's just going to circle back time. and say internally, you know, taking a step back after Rory acquired the company, that's when roles had changed. And so Rick was no longer bowstring manager. And I'm just going to fight for myself here, but (laughs) Uh, that was my first year of Mm -hmm. managing the bowstring department. I got vetted for the job and, uh, I remember that same thing. We were, we actually went in when he, when Rory acquired this from Steve, there was no inventory. So during all of this, we're doing an inventory change to a whole new system where we have all of our beans counted and then all of a sudden everything shuts down. Yeah. Yeah. No. And and let me just jump in there because like, you think about all the different color combinations of bow strings, whether it's 452X or VTX, um, 
you know, and then go to the AeroS department. <laughs> you got 14 parts. different, you know, uh, color rubber cages, you know, and then, yeah, all the parts that go into that. Some are universal, some aren't. So it's just, you know, I remember the first week I was in Vapor Trail and I, I sent an email to, to ears. I'm just like, so what inventory management system do you have in place here? He goes, it's all in my head. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, doesn't, yeah. doesn't pass yeah. the bus test. Mm-hmm. No. You know, I've, you know, I always bring up the bus test. Bus test means if you get ran over, guess what? Uh, we're screwed. Yeah. Who's going to, so who's gonna it's gotta be, you? it's gotta be an open box. Knowledge. Everyone's got to know inventory, not just one person in their head. Yeah. Right. And then I just remember when those crickets came, I, I had a feeling, I was just like, I think we're going to get screwed. Like we're going to get slammed real hard. Yeah. Like real quick. Cause then they started talking about the government free money. I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh boy. And then it just lit on fire. And like what Rick was saying, we never went past like two and a half, maybe th- three days tops is what mm-hmm. we were ever at. Mm-hmm. And God, would we get to all of, but July and we hit like 10 days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. it was is, a terrible look for and myself. All while but, we're doing this, we're implementing a new inventory management system yeah. in yeah. our entire business that went live june 1 i think yeah i mean we don't have to say the name of it but it's the same um uh, inventory management system that nasa uses for their asset tracking so i mean i'm not saying we're rocket scientists here but (laughs) we still use the same software as rocket scientists okay uh so it it makes it um it makes everything make sense as far as like inventory in and out parts in product out all the different um, color options, everything. So, I mean, you showed up the worst possible time, but the best possible time, amazing sales, but also terribly far behind. You know, we were just busting at the seams with string, like orders. Everyone needs a string apparently in 2020. And then Rick goes and has his kid and just to pile it on. Cause I was using Rick as, you know, my mentor, you know, and now he's gone for a couple of weeks anyway. And then, oh my gosh, it was just first year was just insane. It's blazing. Yeah. I mean, you guys did good despite the challenges, right? Like I come back and there's a whole, like a, almost a whole new crew, people I've never even met, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. 10 or, you know, something like that. I just remember the, the learning curve with yeah. that inventory management system was insane and sitting in those meetings and even times where we're talking to the, the tech reps or whoever mm-hmm. it was we were talking to on the phone, we like, we were stumping them. They're like. Oh, hmm, that's interesting. I don't know how we would do that. Yeah, we were basically stretching the capabilities of the software to to the furthest extent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With as many just options that we have and all that kind of stuff, but it ended up working out, and so we're much better off for it. No doubt about that. Because oh, yeah, yeah. you definitely can't rely on someone's just someone's, especially now. Like it's so much more complicated oh than it gosh. was then. Yeah. Stokerized stabilizers. Uh, you know. Acquired them in 2021. Yeah, um, it was February of 21. Uh, was when we yeah. flew out there. So I think it started. I mean, it actually, it started in 20. We reached out um, during the hunting season of 20 because uh, we wanted to collaborate on an actual stabilizer with Stokerized. So we reached out to um, Stokerized and we got in touch with Kyle Stokes and Sean Lutz and we wanted to collaborate with a, a stabilizer and uh, they responded with, hey, what do you think about acquiring us? And so all of a sudden, you know, interest has peaked and so we're um, definitely, you know, all of a sudden like can't do it during busy season. You know, we're just like, mm-hmm. okay, yes, we're totally interested. Um, you know, uh, let's continue this in February where we are we can actually take a breather and um, let's do it. So um, the new year of 2021 comes around. Call up Kyle. Hey, man. Um, so we're serious about this, if you are. So um, we want to fly out to Pennsylvania. We're going to get a, a 30-foot U-Haul truck. Um, and we're going to bring a, a, a video recorder and we're going to go through stokerized boot camp and hang out with you guys for a solid week and record everything. Yeah. And so that's what we did. It was, it was, uh, me and Hollywood and Kyle, mm-hmm. um, Marin at the time. I was and jealous. <laughs> I was really jealous. You were gone. Otherwise, yeah. you know, you would have been there, mm-hmm. I know. But, but Hey, you were doing, uh, God's work. Come on. You had a, a, a beautiful daughter. 
Yeah, dude, I'll never take that. I'll and never regret that time. Got to spend time with her. That yeah, was awesome. I remember because it was the first conversation that you know uh, after you came back, you're like, "Hey, so how's it going?" I was like, "Really good. We bought Stoker Eyes," and you're just like, "What?" It's like, <laughs> "Yeah, man, we did." Yeah, because yeah. you know you can't talk about those things until they're done, mm-hmm. um, except for of course the people that are working on getting it done. So uh, yeah, um, we uh, spent uh, a very good time with Kyle Stokes and Sean Lutz and uh, we'd go out to eat with them at night and um, get up early in the morning and learn the ways of Stoker eyes. (laughs) Yeah. I I think Rick was almost lucky to miss out. That, that was a, that trip was brutal. Yeah, it was, it it wasn't just, you know, butterflies and rainbows. I mean, from the get go, our plane was delayed (sighs) flying to a blizzard. I mean, we like all shared a hotel room, us three guys. (laughs) And I would, we'd get back to the room after like, having a few drinks and dinner and I'd be like, all right, we got to start on the inventory. Yeah, address let's go. We have to, you know, get going on this. So we probably averaged three, four hours. Yeah. We were up till night. one, two in the morning, every night doing, you know, entering inventory, getting everything set. And then, cause here comes another at bus- seven yep. <laughs> or six, whatever it was. And, and here comes another business that has a billion color combinations options, yeah. and options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're just like, wow, well, good thing we just invested all this money in this inventory management system because we were going to be able to roll them up just nicely, um, which we did. It just ended up being a lot bigger task than we imagined yeah. as far as um, putting it in place. Uh, and then, you know, it, it worked out great. I mean, everyone uh, was happy, and we got the Stoker Eyes trailer um, that we have in our warehouse mm-hmm. that came along with the acquisition. Um we got all their equipment, uh, their marketing equipment. Um, of course, we had you know over 100 grand of inventory to bring back yeah. in the the 30 <laughs> foot uh, U-Haul truck, and then the, the trailer is behind the 30 foot U-Haul truck, and so and we're driving back. We're driving back during um, February, where it's a complete like white out blizzard another snowstorm you're like cruising along the south shores of all the great lakes right where like some of the harshest weather can be yeah. in the winter we were yeah. actually in the appalachian mountains for a little bit yeah and i think like the whole week we had probably accumulation of 15 hours of sleep and then we're like driving back in a white out snowstorm and we left at like 6 p.m and so we're like we're just gonna drive through the night we'll get there <laughs> and yeah the appalachian mountains was brutal with the snowstorm and like uh, Kyle and, and Wood are like rolling down a window because there's ice like stuck to our windshield wipers <laughs> <laughs> and the ice would just move up and down and I couldn't see anything. It's like, guys, are we on the road? I don't know. Cause we're just, it's a windy bend in the Appalachian mountains. And finally I'm like nodding. I'm like, this is not safe. We totally got to find a hotel room, get three to four hours. Like we have been every night for the last four or five nights. And, uh, that's what we did. It was, nice, yeah. it, was, it was a cozy You're pretty place. much delirious by the time you were trying to check in. It was oh, the gosh. funniest thing watching him try and function. <laughs> Any <laughs> sort of payment <laughs> processing. <laughs> yeah. I was at the point of hallucinations for it's sure. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was, the, and again, that was the most solid, I think, three to four hours. Of oh, God, had. it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. And the, it was so mesmerized. I was mesmerized by how Kyle just jumped out of bed when the alarm went off. I was like, he was just ready whew. to go. It's just like he popped out and he's like fully ready, ready to go. <laughs> but, but yeah, and then awesome. uh, what? We made it home on a Sunday because we left that. Yeah. Was yeah. It, did we leave on a Friday night? Yeah, we did. Friday night. And then. Is, yeah. that, is that right? Yeah. Then, no, we would have had to got, get back on Saturday then, didn't we? It was it really late Saturday then? Yeah. Then Sunday we had the whole crew at Vapor Trail. Yeah, it's coming right. in the and next help. morning. It's uh, right. Another yeah. night where we got. Three to four hours. Zero of hours of sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just unload it now. Yeah. Then we unloaded it and set it up. And uh, yeah, we were already at 3,000 square feet uh, space that was fully busting at the seams. And so we just made it worse. Yeah. And, uh, but we found the space somehow. I guess, you know, when you can't build out, you, you build up, right? So yeah. That's yeah. what we did. We built a bunch of mezzanines. We'll look like Ewok villages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what they look like, too. Well, after hearing that story, I'm not really jealous anymore that I didn't get to go. Cause... No, I, I I know you had a little thing in there. We might have forgotten a big point in that trip back. 
about one hour out of leaving there. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you have a little bit of a mishap with the trailer or something? <laughs> yeah. We might have been rolling down the highway before we hit the Appalachian Mountains. And all of a sudden, there's like no cars passing us. We're like, <laughs> what is going on? This is after, we're, you know, it was Friday night. Like, this should be busy on the highway Friday night. Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden, there's a trucker, a brave trucker that pulled up to the side of us. And he's like waving us down with his, you know, window down. And I'm like, what, what is he saying? And I rolled out my window, you know, the snow's starting to come. He goes, your trailer, your trailer. And then I look back and I just see sparks flying. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> shit. We totally had a blowout with the trailer. <laughs> and it's a 30-foot, you know, U-Haul truck. And then there are strokerized trailers. So it's just like, I can't see the trailer. Yeah. But when you're on one wheel and it's going to the side, you know, with sparks <laughs> flying, all of a sudden you get a glance of it. I'm like, oh. So then there's what? like a, a shoulder that's probably six feet just wide enough for us. Oh, yeah. Barely fit. And there's these semis just whizzing. I was going to say, now you got them flying by. And every time a semi went by, we did this. Oh yeah. And we're just like, I, I can't even get out and what, look at yeah. it, man. This is insane. And so, um, finally call 911, right? And we're like, yeah, this yeah. is not safe. We're in the middle of a highway with hardly any shoulder. And then some angel trucker, Oh, that's the right. tow truck guy showed up. Yeah. He had two brand new wheels for us and they matched our vehicle and he straight up just changed them right there in the spot. The good Lord intervenes. Man. Yeah. I mean, we were on the side thing. of the road though for like what, two hours, three hours, I think. Oh yeah. I think police were basically like, well, good luck. I mean, we'll, we'll radio out and whatever. And then, I mean, we also found out Pennsylvania, everything apparently closes at like 6 PM on a Friday. It's like maybe seven or yeah, eight. Yeah, and, and, st- and everything was closed. On top of that, it, you know, COVID was still going on. True, yeah. And so you remember when we touched down from the airport, we got there. Oh, yeah. They, they still had mask mandates. It's mask central, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's tough. We were stranded for a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. So. Wow. But we made her back. Yeah. It's a good story. <clears throat> you know, nothing comes easy. Nothing good comes easy, right? No, nothing. No, and and just you know, and Kyle and uh, Stokes and Sean Lutz were awesome, and we were still good friends. Um, mm-hmm. uh, as you know, he still buys stabilizers from us. Yeah. Um, so uh, he definitely is a good teacher because uh, uh, we have continued the quality and durability of his product. <clears throat> yeah, we've always wanted to maintain the integrity that that they put into the company, so we we th- we thrive on that, right? Absolutely. Stokerized get it moved in. I come off a of leave. I, I'm like, wow, I, where are you guys going to put this stuff? It's there. You guys made it work, but man, it <laughs> was, everything was super tight. And now we're trying to build more machines mm-hmm. and we're literally, I mean, the only space we had left was the bathroom to put yep. a jig in, yep. which obviously we couldn't do that. So you begin the process of looking for a new facility. So yeah. walk yeah. us through that. Like, what were you, what was your thought? Were you initially right away thinking, Hey, I, I think we should have a range and all of that. Or was it, or did it just kind of come out of necessity or, it or was the opportunity totally necessity? Cause you know, you're limited for production by your space. Yeah. So I knew that if we were going to keep growing that we needed the space to grow into. Right. Um, and so that was the number one factor. And after we got Stoker, I settled in and you know, uh, get, you know, wheels turning and things uh, were 100% smooth. I was like, um, John, I'm going to be gone a while because I got to find us a new home. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just, you know, kept driving around uh, the area, uh, looking at, I started out looking at equestrian centers because it has all this acreage, you know, right. and oh, they have yeah. this huge barn that's like, uh, you know, HVAC. And, uh, I couldn't get the zoning because even though I had tactiles were okay. I was like tactile strings. Like we can, t- or textiles, excuse me. Yeah. We could totally do this. Like mm-hmm. you know, maybe we'll make it work, but none of the cities that I was talking to would let it fly. Cause I was like, Oh, we could do an outdoor 3d shoot, you know? Yeah. And you know, of course. And, and so it just seemed really cool to me at the time. And then I wised up and I was like, dude, we're stuck six months out of the year here in Minnesota. I was like, we need to build an indoor haven for people that don't want to freeze their buns off and still shoot archery. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I was like, you know, we're going to do a large warehouse and we're going to, we're going to build a wall, a great wall, and it's going to separate 
the manufacturing from the uh, indoor range. And so that's what we did. And we got, you know, a little bit of a retail front up, up front here. Uh, definitely boutique feel. Um, we have, we sell amazing strings here. Arrow rest, the, the stabilizers. The, Don't know if you guys heard of them. The boutique. Yeah. And then obviously the all the other products that we 100% believe in and can vouch for because we've used them in the field. Obviously we carry those as well. Yeah. And we've built a lot of relationships over the years. <clears throat> and so that was a, a, a major source for, you know, the decisions that we made as far as which products we were going to bring in and which ones we were going to carry. Uh, so I remember when we first came into the building and we were looking around and Rory's like, okay, this is my vision. We want to do this. We want to do that. He's like, we're going to rip this wall out and then we're going to build this wall. And I was like looking at it and I'm like, that's like 20 feet tall. And it was what? 140 feet long. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I was like, who's going to build that? And he looks at me in Hollywood. He's like, you guys are, <laughs> I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I was happy to find out that you eventually did get a crew to do it, but we did the rest. So that was, yeah. Got, yeah. You know, the things that, uh, take the longest labor wise, sometimes it's, it's your best interest to pay for that. Yeah. You know, but the things that are specialized and, or, you know, us three can, can do on a, was it Wednesdays and Thursdays you guys came? I gotta so, say we did a great job. We did an amazing <laughs> job. I mean, we had our, uh, I had my general contractor onesies. Um, yep, and you yep. guys had your onesies and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we swung a lot of sledgehammers. Get rage against the machine going. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was we Me and Hollywood Boy, are we. like strategically trying to take walls down and like, so that it's for easy cleanup and we're like maintaining pretty good. And then Rory just like come in with a sledgehammer and he was just like, all right, I need to blow off some steam guys. And just <laughs> went to town, man. There was whole wall had come mangled. down one swing. <laughs> I mean, we took out like, what eight offices. Yeah. Four on yeah. Side, four on that. Yeah. You guys did. I think you and Lauren did all these ones. This was all cleaned up. I think by the time yeah, I was just carpet. involved, yeah. but then we did the other side of the building and, uh, yeah, that was fun. That was cool. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and just to give everyone that is not aware, but our building was an old machine shop for, 25 years yeah and so it was a little dirty and so it was our job Filthy. to clean it up and we did um put a lot of elbow grease in this thing and it shows i mean this place is immaculate now big props to megan because she was doing she did a ton yeah she did um yeah she was I'm here very very blessed to yeah. have her as our commercial painter yeah yeah i was gonna say she, she painted like Every everything. inch in this building, I think, all yeah. twenty five thousand square feet of it. Yeah, yeah. thankfully, because I don't like painting, and <laughs> I hate, especially hate drywall now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, man. you just disliked it a little bit, and now you hate it. <clears throat> By the end of it, I was like <clears throat> an expert. I'm like, man, maybe I should, maybe I don't need to work at Vapor Trail anymore. I'll just become a <laughs> drywall guy. But yeah, that'd be just yeah. There were certain spots that I, I, I left <clears throat> on on purpose because you were so good at it. I was like, oh, he'll get that. I'll move on to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> I Honest. see. I still see. Like I walk around. I'm like, oh man. I see the flaws. But anyway, every week it, it's up. it was just daunting. Just like walking in here, just like, oh, now do we, what do we have to do? Like this is never gonna end. And yeah. we had a set date of when this needed to be done. Oh yeah. And so yeah, I'll just crazy. give you a, a time frame. So we closed in October. It yeah. was it was mid October. Yeah. The seller did not actually get out of the property until it was the day after Christmas. I remember that was mm -hmm. the first day I finally got to walk in here with no one. I was like, mm. wow, this place is huge. It's awesome. Echoey. And yes, and I had that scary mm -hmm. feeling of, you got a lot of shit to do, boy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, um, I'm ready. And so, um, yeah. And then I want to say it started immediately for me after that. And I remember talking to my wife. I was like, yes, yeah, so you're not going to see me for a while. Yeah. I'm pretty much going to move up there. So, yeah. so seven days a week, probably, you know, uh, seven to seven. That's what it felt like. Um, and that was for almost seven months. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, seven, seven. Spring is here and turkey hunting is in full swing. Successfully killing a turkey with a bow is extremely challenging. So after you notch that tag, be sure to give your bow some love by installing a brand new set of Vapor Trail VTX bow strings. Our proprietary VTX material with sci-fi technology, set it and forget it, is proven to hold up better in varying weather conditions. 
includes a lifetime service guarantee against manufacturer defects, and are available in thousands of color combinations to match your custom archery setup. With our three-day ship guarantee, you can be back up and running in no time flat. Contact your local dealer or give us a call at 888-BOWSTRING. That's 888-BWSTRNG. Quit your crying and have confidence in your equipment with VaporTrail VTX Bowstrings. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. And here this whole time, like when you were gone and, and you know, people would come by and they'd be like, Where, where's Rory? Where's Rory? And here I thought you were taking like day flights down to Cancun or something, you know, <laughs> yeah. partying and having a good time. Yeah. But Mai Tai is on, on a rooftop somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with Steve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> both Steves, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no. But yeah, we put a lot of work in and, um, you know, more so you, cause Hollywood and I, I think it was, yeah, it was just Thursday. It was Started with just one day a week, Wednesdays, I think. And then it was, yeah, Wednesday, just ramped Thursday. up really quick to pretty much all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it did actually. Yeah. yeah. But we, I mean, amazing. Cause I remember sitting in there when we were ripping up that carpet and mm-hmm. Andy, I, I didn't think we'd get the carpet ripped up in time for the, op- for the grand opening. But yeah. he was asking me, he's like, so you think it's going to be open by June one? I'm like, or was it June? June 22nd. June 22nd was the... Somewhere in there. I think it's June 17th was our first Soft. Soft, Soft opening. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. July right. 22nd, I think, was the... <coughs> the yep. grand. Yeah, okay. that's right. So, anyway, whatever the date was, and I was like, oof, I don't know, man. I'm like, you got a lot of stuff to do. No, and... We pulled it off. It, I, it's, it's all about having the right resources, too. And not only that, like, the proper connections. Like, the yeah. city of Noka was awesome to deal with. They were... Super cool. We did everything by the book as far as the permits, everything. Yeah. And then after that, it's just like, okay, you got to have the right professionals and you got to get it done correctly and you got to do it for the right price. Otherwise you're, you know, going to go broke trying to uh, build up an amazing building. So, right. so uh, it's just a cool collaboration of family and friends and us all coming together to make it work. That was the coolest part about it. If you ask me, just yeah. what, we all did in a short amount of time Mm -hmm. and now what we get to enjoy on a daily basis. Right. Right. And the national park theme like throughout was, uh, was brilliant. Yeah. And then we had, was it a, a a college class national park thing made our sign, right? They made our sign, our uh, class key that's out front. Yeah. It was out and was there from Wisconsin. Yeah. So that was really kind of a cool thing that, you know, we got to do, and, uh, again, just with, you know, having Sasquatch in the, um, you know, in the pro shop and just all of that, just the theme was just, it was brilliant. I was like, that's, that's cool. You know, and all the signage that kind of goes along with it. It's really cool. It, it made it easy to do since all that signage actually exists out there for, for other campgrounds. <laughs> right. It was just, I was like, that's the feel we want, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. I, and, uh, yeah, it worked out awesome. I remember like just coming in here again and just like hearing some of those people doubting just like there's no way like because we had to move june 1st june 2nd out yeah, of the to move, lake building yeah, out of her and everyone's like it's not gonna happen i'm like no rory you don't know rory then I'm yeah like, it's going to happen I'm like he's not gonna take no mm-hmm. <laughs> like so props to you you push that you push that lever pretty pretty harsh and it it works out and i mean we spent 17 hour 18 hour days i mean yeah <laughs> we were here most of us did yeah and i well, think that you fr- have a kid so well that friday we weren't supposed to start moving until like i think it was 2 p.m and then comcast business totally screwed up and they like shut our phones line off at like eight in the morning oh that's right and yeah. we're just like screw it we're moving now yeah yep. and then we <laughs> yep. just we started moving early and we just kept going until sunday night yeah three days straight I remember, yeah. I remember on the rooftop on Sunday sharing a beer with you guys. Saying, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was a long effing weekend. Yeah. That was a whole nother deal too, because then Lance was kind of being, uh, I won't say the word, but, and then it's like, well, you got to take this wall out and do this and put oh, that railing yeah. back up. And then, well, and then we, we wanted to utilize like some of the old lumber because we right. repurposed a lot of that. E- even the lumber that we ripped out in all those walls, we repurposed for some of the uh, string, string building machines. Mm-hmm. And we still have a ton of it sitting back there that I'm sure we'll use for something eventually. But that was, I mean, <laughs> that building was such a mess when we were in the process <laughs> yeah. of moving things because it was just like, you know, we had to move stuff from this side of the building to that side of the building so we could get this over there and then move it back over. And it was this. But just with the number of people that we had and 
you know, everybody just kept moving, you know? Yeah. And if they weren't moving, it's like, well, then just move out of my way, you know, or go home. I think it's 12 hours straight for almost every single person for three days. Yeah. Most people. Yeah. And we had some guys come back just for, to help out. It, was, mm -hmm. it worked. <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah. And then, and then whiskey and beers on the roof after. Yeah. That's the best way to celebrate a, 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 a good well job done. Right. Yeah. Johnny got like the most amazing photo <clears throat> of me like standing there with my arms up and the sun's going down on the other side oh, of me. I do. I'll put that picture up so people can see it, but Oh yeah. Yeah, that was just a just w when the job was done, it was like I can't believe we pulled that off. I just yeah. can't. Yeah. I just it was it was awesome. It was really cool. And it's and it just going back through the shop too. I take a lot of pride in everything that we did because right. we we did a lot of work and oh, just tons. miraculous how we were all able to make it work and get everybody together and well-oiled machine, mm -hmm. honestly. And now we have the uh, production capacity to, you know, get things done in a, uh, in a three day period right. as far right. as like us having all the proper machines we need, all the uh, right number of guys. Um, and then not only that, we actually get to work in a cool environment, which that helps a lot. Yeah. It's right. nice to not work in the, a sweat factory with packed, oh. packed in like sardines. Yeah. You're literally yeah. talking air temperature, cool environment. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. The guys get to go shoot their bow for lunch, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Previously it was not air conditioned. Yeah. And, was, and now I still get complaints cause you know, it's a little chilly in here. I'm just like, <laughs> you don't know. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. put a they, sweatshirt on. You'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, even when, when you bought the company, we had some, we had done some things to, keep it a little cooler in there mm -hmm. but before that it was just whatever the air temperature was is what we were working in and there was some days where it'd be you know 90 degrees up there easy mm. and all that humidity and everything rises up so you're up there working in literally just like your underwear mm -hmm. and sweating yeah you know and that's that's what we did that's just it was just part of the job well and know? for the guys that have built strings if they're listening to this they know you can't run a fan on yourself yep. when you're building a string, yeah. you cannot do it because it's you have a flame possible. open and it's just going to ruin your string. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but it's, it's tough. It's unfortunate too, at the same time that we didn't have better conditions because we would have been so much more productive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause I don't care who you are. I can sit here and talk about, Oh, how we were, you know, so much, you know, so amazing. Cause we could work in the heat. I mean, it slowed you down. Oh, for sure. Big time. Mm -hmm. And so we, we eventually got to a point where it's like, man, we got to do something about this. I mean, we had guys dropping like flies, couldn't keep them busy, couldn't keep them on because they just get too exhausted, you know? And, uh, so yeah, beautiful facility to work in now. Right. Super efficient. <clears throat> We've got everything very strategically located. So everything flows well. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're poised to do well in the bowstring department this year we're already doing really good to start mm -hmm. and it's only going to get better from here on out so that three-day guarantee everybody's probably been seeing us pushing that yeah bring it hard. back that's and what we're doing is just bringing it back you know <clears throat> we're now that to it now that COVID's over and we're in our new facility where we have the capacity so we are uh, back to old times so uh the pro shop What's, how are we doing in the pro shop? What's, I mean, as far as like memberships doing really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say all eyes are on me. <laughs> yeah, you are the GM. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I do help run the pro shop more like I do run the pro shop. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, we have 24 seven access now with this big building and yeah, we've got quite a few, uh, members that sign up for that. And I mean, we haven't hit the triple digits yet, but tell them the cool I'm thing waiting. about that. What's that? Our 24 seven access. Yeah. What they're getting. Well, I mean, I mean, so 24 hour access, I'll just go ahead. I'll, I'll try. Yeah. Um, so all the platinum members, when you sign up, you get a card swipe. And yep. so you get that. And so the member door obviously has a card swipe. You swipe it and you come on in anytime you want 24 hours, seven days a week. And you got a 40 yard indoor range, mm -hmm. uh, fully heated, fully air conditioned, uh, with a sink, Coke machine, you got some stacks. Got snacks. a couch. I mean, there's an Amazon Fire TV if you want to Netflix it out. Yeah. <laughs> first date night, go right there. Yeah. Netflix <laughs> and chill. Yeah. yeah. We, we have a great group of guys, though. I mean, 
the members here, I mean, we already created that core, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And like Rick and I touched on it on the last podcast, that's where, you know, we had that sort of thing years ago uh, when I was first getting into the archery, the 24 seven club. And um, Rory won't let us have a pizza maker, but he says something about insurance has something to do with that. But Burning the building um, down or something, I don't yeah. know. But, I, just, I, just, I know every time I'd walk in there, I'd smell pizza. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't it'd want be, that. It'd be great, but yeah, the fire hazard is far too large. Mm-hmm. Um, Cokes are great. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, we have a great community already, you know, built up and, you know, a great group of customers and guys that are more like friends almost at this point. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, great to just have build that community and the, you know be able to BS with them, but and no um, longer is weather a factor and whether you get to go correct. shoot or not. Yeah, you, know, you can tune out to forty yards, you know, with no variables, mm-hmm. you know, other than yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's the great part of it. And yeah, I mean, the pro shop comes with a techno hunt. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, you installing that with the techno hunt guy as well. I mean, having that other tunnel, I, don't, I think that kind of came as a surprise a little bit. I think that was kind of the... People didn't know about I, I don't think my I'd, plans even the, I knew about the tunnel. it. And then you're like, yeah, we got Techno Hunt coming in. So, yeah, I mean, we've got Techno Hunt open for public and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is at yeah. 20 yards, right? And they, we have another line for yep. kids at 10. Yep, yep, yep exactly. And um, Yeah, so that's going well. I mean, there's definitely some learning curves with software with that thing. But, yeah, yeah I mean... It's pretty sweet. And then you can hunt elk indoors now, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also in an air-conditioned, non-rainy environment so, yeah. <laughs> or heated environment, yeah. too. And the cool thing I like about Techno Hunt is you get to use your entire setup. A right. li- I mean, all you do is take off your field points and put on the blunt tips. Yep. And you don't have to change anything. Just right. go and shoot the line. My favorite thing is the bugs. The I bugs. Like, I like to shoot the bugs. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man really it helps their <laughs> accuracy shooting a, a smaller being aim small miss small there right? you go yeah. there those you things go. fire me up <clears throat> but at the same time too like it like you said with anything that's like technological sometimes it doesn't um you know register correctly but either way it's still it's so fun right. get a couple buddies you know it's 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 a blast yeah it's a blast and you're so, yeah. beating up a target and all that kind of stuff right saves life of the blocks out there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, we had that date for moving here and then did our soft open mid June. And then that's when everything really came alive was like, okay, July 22nd, I think is when we were going to do it. The big grand opening. And yeah, man, that was, that was cool. That was insane. I, I remember we had, driving here. We had over 200 people. And you guys tell me how many people were there. I was yeah. like, wow. I'm just like, it's wow, like it, this is awesome. It happened. Immaculate. Definitely, definitely taco free tacos i think helped free tacos, yeah. yeah i didn't even yeah. get one for the, i got way. the last one they were tasty you're welcome all of a sudden i see him driving off i'm like no <laughs> yeah he did such it a good tough. job i'm a f- big fan of tacos he was yeah. out there for like three hours how did you not get a taco i man I was we had so many busy. people yeah. yeah well and then and i probably spent more time in the back like Mm-hmm. touring with yep. people and you know kind of shooting the shit the and private everything tours and yeah so mm-hmm. that was a you know and it yeah, the day just flew by you know yeah um, it didn't have anything to do with the keg in the back oh uh, yeah the keg <laughs> yeah, there was <laughs> <laughs> might have had a few yeah <clears throat> but yeah that was that was a cool day and i actually i i think we were we were hanging mounts on the wall the day before weren't oh, we yeah Oh yeah. 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 And it was just like, we, we couldn't decide where they were going to go. So I'm like, we're just going to hang them up and then, and then we can adjust them later. And I know, I think you guys went home and then I actually was, changed. Yeah. Right. Was <laughs> that <laughs> the soft opening? We did that. We yeah. Did, it had to be because I know yeah. there was a lot of stuff that changed in that first month. That's I mean, right. like we, we just threw band-aids and just mm-hmm. threw it up for June soft open to be ready. Yeah. And I think you and I were here. That's close why to you always till. do a soft opening. Right. Yeah. yeah. For any other business owners out there, please, and you're, you have a retail location, always do a soft opening. Yeah. Yeah. That was smart. Work some kinks out because boy, we're there. We. I mean, <laughs> it was the best decision we ever made. Yeah. yeah. It just made you know what it did. It made the grand opening that much more fun. Yeah. Because we had our shit straight by then. Yeah. You know? Everything yeah. was functioning. I knew how to work a POS system, which I didn't know anything about until the day we opened on the soft open. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good practice and yeah, it was, it was smooth and smooth. So the pro shop, we got a full service pro shop. We got certified bow technicians. Yeah. Right? Uh, yes. So all three, you're looking at them. 
you know, I mean, we, you know, we've been doing it for a long time already up to that point, you know, but then, so we, we went to the George Chapman, um, we were just basement bandits of, though. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, what is the George Chapman school of archery? Archery. archery. Yeah. Something mm-hmm. like that. You with, can tell me it's the school of excellence and I might <clears throat> say yes, but I think it's school of archery with, uh, with Steve Van Zyl, like New York's state champion, 25 times yeah i'm just making that up i don't know he, but he's really well known out there mm-hmm. big with pse buddies with all the head honchos up there we we're when that when that whole like new acquisition was going on and everything we kept hitting him up like steve what's going on come on buddy give us yeah. a give us something he wouldn't give us anything yeah yeah he was, but he was very um very quiet on that one i'm surprised we yeah. didn't break him Right, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and he's such a cool dude. Like we, yeah. so the three of us fly out to New York, right, for this, and and we we got um, paired up with another pro shop that's out in that area. Dan and and his dad from Hunt Works. Hunt Works, right? Hunt so yeah. Hunt Works, couple other really cool guys. They're dealers of ours now, so they sell our bowstrings and our arrow rests. And that was fun. That was a blast. Like was. steak dinners. Every night, that was nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, breakfast with Steve. Oh, every yeah. morning. Oh yeah, don't forget that. What oh, was yeah. it like? Seven thirty in the morning. Seven in the morning. His bottomless cup of coffee. Yeah, man. He, he I think he drank like ten a day. Yeah, and it, yeah. it was and it was caffeine free. Uh, yeah. Oh no, say, I wonder I think it was why actually decaf. He could do ten a day. Yeah. Decaf. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, a little heart would be yeah. I was pumping like a hummingbird. <laughs> yeah, he's a little bit. He's a getting up there in age and I'm like, well, this dude's slugging down coffee. I mean, how's he <laughs> still got it? But then we figured it out. Yeah. No, that was a cool time we got to spend with him. Yeah. And a uh, great education, right? Like I know yeah. that we already knew a lot, but like just having any kind of uh, refresher like that and mm-hmm. you get to learn other ways to do things too. Mm-hmm. Right. That's, that's what's really cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we taught him how to set up limb drivers because he didn't teach them at that time. He basically just taught cable driven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then we added limb driven technology to his curriculum. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, it's a forever friend. I'd say no. I mean, like yeah. we see him at ATA show and just say, hey, what's up, man? And, you know, tell him that Matthews is better. I mean, he loves that. Oh, so if, he, you, if, if you ever meet Steve Van Zyl, I'll just tell him Matthew's better. So. He loves to bust your chops, man. I he know. He loves to bust your chops. But <laughs> He's yeah, a we, great sport. He had a lot of funny things to say about <clears throat> Matthews. And he so. put us in touch with our pro shop equipment, too. Yeah, yeah, that is where we learned about, uh, uh, what is it, ATC, Archery mm-hmm. Tooling Company, I believe is what they call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, amazing presses and uh drop 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 i mean all their tools are just awesome awesome. and had no idea about them until we got there and then it's like whoa (laughs) these are nice Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, so that's a a cool addition there that we have that a lot of other pro shops maybe don't and uh what else so we talked about the techno hunt we talked about the range what about so product launches since since you jumped on board, uh, it, so far in your tenure, we've released the Pro V X, mm-hmm. uh, the new Pro V, which is the Pro V with the Pro V X cage mm-hmm. on it, and then of course, Gen Integrate and Integrate X. Right. So we'll start with the Pro V X and the Pro V. You know what fascinated fascinated me about the Pro V was just the the almost like cult following is like such a classic in the mm-hmm. archery industry and um bulletproof design and you know the i know you you probably said this is like uh our biggest problem is that our products are too well built so they don't buy another one they, they last just, too long they last too it's long like a product for life yeah yeah and so uh you know it's hard to make something better that's already that good but i know that you know, just like your Apple iPhone or, you know, you drive a Chevy Silverado, you know, you, you kind of want a newer edition. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you there's a there's a little bit newer technology out there that you can tweak and make it a little bit cooler, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's all we did. We just, you know, instead of the um, aluminum 6061 cage, um, which holds up great, but, you know, maybe people want a slimmer design. Maybe you want the carbon cage with the rubber overmold for increased quietness. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what about 
uh, micro adjustment windage and elevation. Yeah. You know, so I just, for all those people out there that love the pro V model, I just wanted to give them something a little bit cooler. Yeah. And a little bit more streamlined, slim. Um, and so that's what we did. And it was pretty cool at the time because what well, that was mid 2021. I think it was June, 2021. We launched mm-hmm. that. And so that was when the IMS was uh, gaining some traction, you know, and so like our Gen 7, 7X uh, were not fitting on a lot of the Matthews. And so the Pro VX did. Yeah. And so that helped out a lot as far as fitment issues. Um, and we developed the Matthews specific bracket for that, which was a whole different design that we that you'd never seen in the right. industry. So right. That was very innovative. Yep, and yeah, we fully we patented that uh, patented that bracket, um, uh, and yeah, that is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's hard to um, visualize in your in your mind, but you can check it out on our website, um, the Pro VX Matthews bracket. You should be able to see it. <clears throat> um, and then, so the Pro V uh, new edition was basically just you know we. Uh, now have an opportunity for customers to pick out a color with the carbon cage and rubber overmold. So again, um, if you don't want the black 6061 aluminum, you can now uh, match your setup with right. your custom colors. And then uh, that brings us to what? The Gen 8, 8X. Yep. So that was a long time coming. The eight, uh, we'll call it the 88X series. Um, we uh, talked to QAD and I think it was 2020 we asked them. We was like, hey, uh, can we get a license agreement? No. And then called them 21. Hey, can we get a license agreement? No. Uh, finally, 22, we got one. Um, yeah. At least we got the nod that we're going to get one. So we immediately started, you know, scrambling. and um, We wanted to build it on our um, more popular 7.7X series. And so that's what we did. And um, obviously now fits on the integrated mounting system and uh now it's our best selling air rest it's yeah. really taken off um as you know the eight um is our standard model where you know you can um you don't have windage in uh, or excuse me micro adjustment for windage or elevation um and then you don't have a uh, bottom limb attachment as well option uh where the 8x has all those things yep and so um, th- that uh, I would say is the the the, the uh, benefit of it is that being streamlined to fit on the Matthews V3, V3X, and Phase Four, um, it was actually built around that model. So that's why yeah. it looks so damn good on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then, <clears throat> go ahead. No, go. Oh, I was going to say we also have a, a Bowtech version yeah. um because uh their cable guard is super th- uh thin but in the way where our um windage when you go over we had to make our own bracket which it fits perfectly now for right. the Botec series um the newer Botec models with the integrate um and then uh we're in the process of uh looking at the PSE Mach 34 coming out with the version yeah. of that uh we have uh, I don't want to give too much, but we definitely have some other arrow rests um, in the pipeline that we're working on. Yeah. Right. Um, one you might see this year for sure. That'll be so sweet. Just I'll leave it at that. <laughs> for sure. So let's talk about the um, some of the, some of the design innovations that you've brought to the table too. Uh, so with the uh, with the Pro VX you had the inspiration for going with like a Tron theme. Mm. And uh, when he had at first presented it to me, I was kind of like, well, you know, uh, you know, like retro kind of eighties thing. And I was like, well, you know, start putting it together. And then once it was done, it was like, wow, this looks really cool. Like this is really going to stand out on the shelf, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and just, you know, get people's attention to looking at it and then going, oh, this is, you know, and then moving forward now to the gen integrate again, just being a, you know, we're Zennials, right? So we like grew up in the eighties. We're like mid between, um, gen X and millennials. And 
but just the GI, you know, as boys, we grew up on GI Joe, oh, right? Everything. Yeah. And so Rory is like, I got an idea. What do you think? And I was just like, GI Joe, that's, I mean, cause G I eight mm-hmm. and then Jenny integrate it just the way that it all came together. I'm just like, it's like, man, this is, this is perfect. This is yeah. brilliant. Well, I mean, yeah, that's why I, I came to you and I go, Rick, when I open up this arrow rest, I want it to feel like a GI Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like that nostalgia of opening, ripping open a new GI Joe that you just convinced your mom to buy you when you're at the grocery store and right. you, kind of just, you know, you might've just thrown it in the basket. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that I just remember like when I was a kid, that was probably my most exciting part of growing up in the days is just, you know, having, uh, my GI Joe characters. Yeah. And then of course blowing them up later on when you get older. Right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. And then, so I remember some of the inspiration that you sent me, you know, some of the old packaging and stuff. And I was looking at all the old characters and, all the names and started thinking about, you know, that was like the next question. It was like, okay, so who's going to be like our GI Joe on the, on the cover of the packaging. And it was like, should, should Rory be on there? Should I be on there? We talked about putting Spencer on there. (laughs) Um, and then it's like, well, Hey, you know, we have these partners, Mm -hmm. right. And so, uh, we had just, uh, started a sponsorship, uh, with Jason Matzinger that year. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it was like, well, that's, that's perfect. And then we've had, and, and he's been for the record, he's been shooting our stuff for a really long time. Yeah. Um, but we finally just made it official. Uh, and cause it's just like, that's kind of what we want. Yeah. You know, I don't, he's our real live, uh, vapor trail action hero. Yeah. So yeah. It's we, only right that we make him a figure, right? Exactly. And, and I, and that's what we always have kind of strived for is we want people to shoot our stuff because they like it. Not cause we're writing them a check. And, uh, and then we had already had a long <clears throat> standing relationship with Steve Eklund at the edge TV. And so it was just, it was really cool having the conversations with those guys. Cause I started out the conversation by saying, how would you like to be a real American hero? <laughs> and Steve Eklund being Canadian, yeah. you know, but he, he was like, yeah, oh, he, he was so, super excited. And he, even Steve said that, you know, he used to work in marketing and he was just like, this is, this is great. And Jason was like, man, I'm s- super excited. I can't wait to see what you do, how you, you know, how you come up with what, uh, what you're planning on doing. And it, it all just came together really, really nicely. Yeah. Um, and it, it got a lot of attention at the ATA show. People would see the little tent we had in the aisle, even mm-hmm. though it made all the ATA people mad because so we could walk around it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's in the way. But yeah. that's what I was, I was like, man, just let's get it out there to let people yeah. see it, you know, and they would stop on a dime and come in the booth and take mm-hmm. a look at stuff. So we had our phase four up with it looking sexy on. Yeah. 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 So that was really cool. It was really awesome when I was like posting it out there and stuff. And then, you know, Jason and Steve were sharing it and we sent them, even though they both shoot prime and can't mount them on their bows right now. Yet. Um, we sent them each one, you know, so that they could put mm-hmm. it in their trophy room and, Speaking of, I'm still waiting for them to give a little post of, you know, whatever they built or however they're having it displayed. <laughs> Steve was like, oh, I'm going to build a shadow box for it and put it up on the wall. So we'll see, we'll see what That's he awesome. ended up doing with it. But uh, so that was that was really cool. It was, a, you know, putting together, being afforded the time now to like actually put together uh, a decent launch video you know, make some really cool teasers to get people kind of jazzed up about it. And, and I, I, I have to say that that is part of the success, but mostly just the functionality and the fact that now it's like you have this awesome platform that you can fit onto the integrating mountains mounting system and mm-hmm. you can get it on a Matthews. Cause so many of those Matthews guys were just like, man, I just, I really wish I could shoot this, but Mm-hmm. You know, and, yeah, and the Pro VX was referring good, to the seven seven X fans, right? Yeah, that wanted it on their Matthews. Yeah, so that that was the 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 main momentum behind the eight eight X series, right? And making it happen. And the Pro VX was, you know, it was an option, but so many guys want full capture. They right. don't want to have the full capture cage, yep. and so you know, once that came out, people were super excited about it. And, they flew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They now flew. Now we have something that fits everything. Mm-hmm. If it's got the IMS for the most part with, you know, Bowtech needing their bracket, a couple of bows needing their own, but 
yeah, if it's everything, it makes us relevant to the IMS. And we're one of three companies that have that actual that, IMS mount. That we are aware of, yes. I'll yeah. say it that way. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, I want to say it's pure archery group. That yeah. Yep. Yeah, the only other ones that have the integrated yeah, there's mounting a, system besides QED. Obviously. So the rip cord, and then they have kind of a they have an octane uh, one. Yep, yeah, octane. Yeah, yep. those are the only two other we've seen yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. But yeah, I mean, it puts us right back on the map. You know, it's an awesome rest being able to fit. And you're right, man. It looks sleek. It looks so nice, mm -hmm. especially on the Matthews. But anything else, I'd say too. Even on the that PSE Fortis is looking pretty nice, mm -hmm. especially in purple. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, are we allowed to talk about our our new baby that we possibly could be coming out here shortly? You're the owner. You tell me, bud. Well, you know, some, sometimes you're allowed to kick me in the shins. Right? This could no, be the no. this could be the um, the launch of it, but we can always you know throw some Easter eggs out. We can yeah. always. But yeah, I think we should. I there is. I already kind of threw one out a little bit on the outdoor podcast with Dave and yeah, Tim we, at the uh, outdoor podcast. We just won't go into hyper detail, you yeah. know, just a little bit. But I mean, so basically, we are coming out with a, a you know, I would say an industry disruptor a little bit for quick disconnect. Um, I'm not going to say the name of it, but you know, my my biggest complaint about uh, quick disconnects is they're not that quick. You still have to unscrew them. Um, and before you, you know, take them out of the actual, um, you know, whether it's a circular dovetail or what, um, and it still is a pain in the butt. Not mm -hmm. only that, your logo is always cattywampus. And then if you, uh, like to run an SS1 or a stasis, um, like an offset bracket, offset bracket, yeah. you know, uh, beasting or causing what the counter slide. Mm -hmm. So if you do any of that, um, the biggest complaint is your angle is never the Indexing, same. Indexing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your rotational degree of your angles is something that you're always messing with when you're uh, traveling to A to B as far yep. as, you know, uh, uh, packing away your bow in your bag and then breaking it out, getting ready to go hunt or go shoot. And mm -hmm. so um, we've now come up with a solution where it fixes all those things, where we it is a simple lever, and it comes, there's no twisting involved. Your logo will always be straight. Um, and if you run a counter slide or a SS1 or a stasis, um, that again, your rotational angle will always be there. My, my biggest, I guess, um, uh, love for it is the fact that it disconnects so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an actual quick. It's beautiful. It really is. It's yeah. something that has been needed for quite some time because the old quick disconnect that we had, although it worked, I can't tell you how many times I was out in the field mm -hmm. and it's dark, you know, you're going to go turkey hunting or you're going to go bow hunting or something like that. And you're trying to thread that bolt, that mm -hmm. lever in, and then you've got the weight of the stabilizer preventing you from, you know, indexing it properly and yeah. screwing, and it was just, you're fighting with it and then dropping it. And now you got to, get on your hands and knees in the dark and then you you know so it was just it was not convenient yeah. and this thing is just like yep one thumb off. lever and it's off and it's and it's um the tolerances are all very tight there's no slop there's no movement in it mm -hmm. um i didn't you know when we're shooting it there's no movement at all it's no. solid it's tight yeah. and it's yeah. patented that's yeah. the best part yeah just, just a little <clears throat> Fun part this weekend at the 3D shoot, I literally threw my bow just on the ground. And <laughs> Caitlin and Luke were just laughing at me, like, What the heck? Like, who is this guy? I'm like, well, if my stuff can't hold up to it, I don't want it when I'm hours from being helped. Yeah. And granted, it's just a you know quick disconnect, didn't budge. I mean, nothing did yeah. at all. But I'm just like, So many guys are so light on their equipment, but it's like, what if you do fall? I mean, I did in North Dakota. I fell, slammed my bow into the rocks. And yeah, I mean, luckily it was fine, but I'm like, okay, I want everything to be solid and yeah. that thing doesn't move. Or it's when you got so your nice. bow attached to your pack and you're just, you know, crawling through yeah. trees and stuff. Trudging through it. It's better yeah. hold up. If it doesn't hold up, I don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> it's nice. I'm excited. Yeah. I, you know, I'm super excited. And then even, even so, um, you know, we're, in our like R and D phase, we've got a number of people that have it on their bows 
for turkey season and we just hope that we can have someone get some success that way we can get some really good shots of it and then we're going to get boom right into the right into the marketing side of things again i'm going to have the joys of filming and editing and doing all yeah. that um and putting together some really cool content yeah and and even better than what i've done before now i have the help of damon uh wolf from uh, wolf media and so he's a very talented individual takes some great photos great video and uh so yeah we're going to be putting together some really cool yeah. stuff maybe we should come up with another theme for this one yeah <laughs> mm. some barbie maybe wait, wait. Talking, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you I'm, I'm th man, the gears are turning right now in my head. I'm trying to think, like, what else is there? Well, we already said it once, but um, we don't want to give too much away. It has to do with mustaches, yeah. It, well, I was also thinking, like, <laughs> maybe some MacGyver ish kind of thing, oh too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, going back to the 80s or whatever, but mm -hmm. um. So yeah, so we got that going. That's that's part of the future. Yeah, and that'll be coming. Um, we'll go ahead and say this fall. Yeah, maybe sooner. Maybe sooner. I don't know, but it's always yeah. good to be stay on the safe side and just yeah. try not to make any empty promises. But yeah, that's kind of how things go with this with machining and anodizing, and you know, it's a and process. The R and D making phase sure is, your product is rock solid. Yeah, right. The R and D phase is is the most critical. So, what else? What else do we got going on for? Um, for vapor trail stoker eyes coming up in the future that we can that we can talk about i mean we've got a lot of irons in the fire you know i mean we'd be in trouble if we didn't have ideas constantly a brewing you know but um you know we had a i would say a pretty successful uh league season here mm -hmm. at the shop you know for our first run at it and you know we hope to grow it we had a couple of really fun shoots and we've got some good feedback from a lot of people and some really good ideas for what we want to do next year. We're going to step it up and, and do some, some fun stuff, maybe have some shoot downs under the lights instead okay. of, you know, do some cool stuff like that. Get some, put some pressure on some guys, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get the heart pumping a little bit while they're trying to win some money. Um, I'm very excited about this podcast actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we had some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, we got some some guys that are uh, turkey hunting professionals, whitetail, elk, and then, you know, maybe some that might have had a mishap with, you know, a bear attack. Right. So we got some <laughs> yeah, exciting one. content coming up. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's nothing cooler than when you really like a brand that – that brand opens up the door where you can kind of, you know, go down the rabbit hole with them. Right. Um, you get to see, you know, a little behind the scenes, what's going on, uh, the people that are involved, uh, methods, process, and um, just the ideologies of the company. And mm -hmm. so uh, I feel like this really gives us the opportunity to share that now with our customers and dealers. Right. And, um, hopefully they can be a part of it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember, you know, we had kind of discussed this, you know, a few years back about having a podcast and I was like, Oh yeah, that'd be a good idea. And then it just, so many things were coming at us so quick that it just, we, it was kind of an afterthought. And then, and it, and it wasn't even really on the radar until, you know, at ATA. And then I had somebody approach me about doing a podcast with them. And then again, just, some marketing challenges that we knew we were going to run into this upcoming year. And so it was like, this is the perfect time to pivot and do that. And then, and still knowing there's so many people out there that have never heard of us. We we're going mm -hmm. into our 30th year of business and mm. there's still so many people that don't know about us. You know, it's like, so what do we, how do we get on the map, you know, and, and um, do some things to, to really uh, kind of, brand you know create some brand awareness right and so that's really where a lot of this came up and you know just doing as many podcasts as I could to knock off the cobwebs and ta having conversations about what equipment we need and all that kind of stuff and then I approached Hollywood I was like what do you think about doing a podcast and he was just like I'm in you know it's like not even <laughs> a, like, whatever I'm like cool all right well let's you know and so uh it just the whole process has been a lot of fun and having these conversations is really cool like and I'm I can't wait to get into the weeds with some of these other guys that we are going to have coming up on the podcast. A, a lot of experts in, in the field 
when it comes to all everything that you said, you mm-hmm. know, elk, deer, turkey, I mean, just bow hunting, archery, target archery in general, all that kind of stuff. And just looking forward to bring back that at the range feel mm-hmm. like we're just here to shoot our bows and hang out and have a good time and, you know, blow off some steam and whatever else, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, unfortunately we can't, you know, cook a pizza, but <laughs> We can order one. You can order. One. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There we go. in that day, in that day and age now, right, where we can do that. So, yeah, I thank you for saying that because that is that that's going to be a huge part of what we're doing this upcoming year, and uh, just look forward to seeing all the people that choose to follow mm-hmm. along and ask questions and all that kind of stuff. So, right, and I think that you know, for people that listen and follow us, they'll they'll be more. Uh, educated and uh, they'll be able to uh, kind of track where we're at as far as new products coming out right um, is as far as where we're headed as a company as well um, and you know we talk about not just vapor chill we talk about all new things in the mm-hmm. industry mm-hmm. so uh, it's just a good way to stay up to speed yeah yeah so what about all that aside what about uh, what about this upcoming year as far as hunts you got anything planned or or just just vacations or no I mean, out at all I, typical whitetail you know yeah. i'm kind of a old school texan uh bow hunter so mm. uh it's that and, and and hog hunting so yeah um i'll be doing that and come september of course um and then whitetail yeah uh with my father-in-law probably wisconsin come in september august with the 100 foot tree stand with the 100 foot <laughs> tree stand yeah <laughs> i've um It'd be really hard to take a sniper shot from there. <laughs> it's, it's that tall. Yeah, you're better off just 20, 30 feet up um, in your normal tree stand. That one's a little too high. Tell yeah. us more about the 100-foot. Well, it's not really a tree stand, but it's it's like a... It's a house a built house. 100 feet up. Dude, yeah. it has an elevator. It has a shower, <laughs> a bathtub, a kitchen. <laughs> yeah, no, what? I'm just like, oh, yeah, and they're almost done with it, and I've been like... Tell my father in law, I was like, hey, so after this is done, you're like, you're going to watch the kids so my wife and I can have date night maybe up there. Mm-hmm. Well, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just walk out there and it feels like, um, you know, the old school like fire towers mm-hmm. yeah. in the middle of the forest. Yeah. It's it's like that. Yeah. All you just look out and there's That's just what I a horizon of trees, man. It's just so <laughs> gorgeous out there. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And, not to mention that, you know, you can see a few lakes too. I mean, you can see deer walking there and you're so, huh, when you're a hundred feet up, they can't smell you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's great for nature, nature watching too. So it's good. It makes me want to say like, what in the Airbnb is going on up there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's actually yeah. a smart Sounds idea. Sounds like what he's pieing off mm-hmm. for. I mean, a good amount of money. Yeah. I'm waiting to get invited though to go out West. So that's, that's, you know, well, makes, whenever I get the invite. Makes you feel any better. I got all my points. And I got oh. my first year of not drawing for a big horn sheep in Colorado. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I got a few years for that. So got it. Yeah. We're going to find out about North Dakota here in a couple of days. So yeah, that'll be, that'll be mm-hmm. cool to see how that goes. Cause if me and you and Damon and Griffin draw, man, we're going to go make that deer. We're going to go make a movie. <laughs> That'd be sweet. <laughs> not that kind of movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a deer hunting movie <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just a, running around in the hills and watching sunsets movie. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Yeah. But I, I have a feeling someone's got one it. deer is going to die. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But that's contingent upon all of us drawing, but who knows? We'll see what happens with that. If I don't draw that tag, hopefully I draw a bear tag here in Minnesota and I'll go and suffer up in the boundary waters again for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do my OTC tag, do some public land. Maybe there you go. For that. But North I'll, Dakota you're talking? No, for bear. Oh, because yeah. I've got another six years. I gotta wait. So that's right. I do yeah. like your your bear tag story. That was really good. When we were at ATA, you told the guys we were out to eat with. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, the um, I think it's OSG. The, are you talking about up in the Boundary Waters? Yeah. Oh, which part of? Oh, me getting stuck there. Or yeah, like are you getting stuck dying? there. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's an not adventure. Funny. It's <laughs> all about the adventure. <laughs> I'm man. just kidding. No, I'm just joking yeah. with you, dude. Yeah, no, it was exciting. It was. Uh, I think yeah, you should tell it now. It honestly. was dangerous. Uh, um, 
but at, well, maybe we'll, I think we'll save it for a different episode because we're kind of getting, uh, okay. stretching for time, but I do want to have that conversation because I've we've talked about it on a couple other episodes, but we definitely do need to dive into the weeds with that. Cause that was a, um, that was a cool hunt and it was very difficult and it's something that I, I kind of, I'm almost like, I'm cool if I don't draw the North Dakota tag because I do look forward to getting up there again right away. You know, I'm nervous about having like a gap year and then. Mm. it fading away and not wanting to do it you know i got the drive to do it now so but who knows we'll see i'll be happy either way what else do you have as far as like so you did i'm running for birds right now but i mean are you talking for applications that yeah. are out yep. i mean i did colorado and then um i'm just gonna do points in montana and then maybe in wyoming but she's a fair bit expensive and they don't like non-res so yeah um then north dakota one of the guys here Going back to us having a community, kind of gave me a small invite down to Nebraska, and then another Ooh. one this last weekend to South Dakota. Cool. As long as he's got the yes from the right people for South Dakota. So I might apply for South Dakota as well. What? It's not might. I will. But um, there's two different tags you can get for that otherwise. Mm -hmm. So South Dakota, otherwise Nebraska, those two are up in the air, but I'm also looking for a house. So. <laughs> need to save some money somewhere. You, so. you don't want to stay in, in your uh, SUV? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> be nice to move out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I got a lot. I mean, the whole bear hunting thing, uh, whatever. Especially in the Boundary Waters. Boundary Waters can shove it, so. Yeah, that's, I mean, get a couple under your belt first before you go try to do that. Yeah. I'll leave it to you, experienced I mean, old men. If your goal is to kill a bear don't go to the boundary waters because it's probably not going to happen. You know, I'm seriously it's, but I, I had planned on going up there anyways to do some just fish and just get away, you know? And then it's like, well, I may as well apply for a bear tag. I'm probably not going to get it. And then I got it, you know, but then I didn't have the access permit and, and that. So you want to talk about things getting complicated, you know, yeah. as far as applying for stuff in other States, that's one that's, um, you know, I, something that would be good to educate people on but at the same time nobody wants to do it so it's easy to get a tag there's no you don't have to have points like you're yeah, almost guaranteed say to that's get it your first year wasn't it yeah a one and done yeah nice. so that's why i didn't wow. think i'd get it i figured it'd take two at least because you're looking at up in those quota areas you're we're getting up into like five six years now right? yeah yeah so um just shocked that i got it you know it would have been cool to bring up bring a bear home but this know. year yeah We'll see. And that's something that we should do too. Now that you're a Minnesota resident, you know, get, getting up and when things start getting a little more streamlined and established here with the new building and, and all that kind of stuff. The problem is, is you gotta, you gotta be out baiting like almost every weekend in August. Well, that I already told Wood, I was like, look, man, you take me to one of these hunts out West or in the area. I was like, it's, it's a company trip, man. It's paid for. What are you waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Now, the points are a different story. All right. Elk it's called it is. Research, yeah, I know. Research is and Montana. development. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you want to, I mean, it's <laughs> 1200 bucks for your combo day. <clears throat> yeah. Oof. She's tough. Oh, I'll get out there one of these days. Yeah. Or we could do Idaho. You can do that kind of a little bit. It's like 600 bucks, but now you can't get a tag, I guess. It's like almost impossible. Tough to get a tag, and then you're driving for 20 hours. Oh, I can't remember how long it took for us to get out there, but it was... It 18 was to 20 hours, long. I think. Mm -hmm. No thanks. And of course, we drive straight through. You know, you can't make a stop along the way. Just got to get there, get yeah. back. Yeah, that's the way I roll, too. I was going to say, that's Rory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I stopped once on the way to Texas. All gas, no brakes. Just to pee. Or not even, you're probably peeing in a Gatorade bottle or something. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Dumping yeah. it out the window. I only do it when I roll solo, though. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> common. I haven't seen that. Common so. courtesy, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, I, I got to get more diesel in my truck. Uh, come, uh, gosh, yeah, Kansas. Kansas City. So we do our stop. <laughs> halfway. Yeah, halfway was, point. Yeah. Well, yeah. like what? Isn't it like a third of the drive all Texas? I mean... It, well, I well stay, you're on the north side. I stay though. in North Dallas with a friend the first night I get there. Yeah. And then we go get our, our humble abode, our 1983 RV that we fixed <laughs> up. Oh. And then uh, we, we drive it out to West Texas, to our family land. All right. Yeah. Well, 
So that means we we're gonna have to do a home and away then. You know, you get invited out west, and of course we gotta go down to Texas. That's how it works, man. Or Africa. Yeah, or Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, ways down that. the road for me. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I, I I'm. It's a toss up for me about Africa. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. It's. It's a trade off. I mean, I I would I'd like to go there just specifically to. Uh, you know, hunt those species that mm-hmm. are there, but the style of hunting isn't quite, yeah. it's too much up my alley, holding your hand kind of deal. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Just sitting there waiting for them to come into, you know, a water hole or whatever. Waiting I mean, for your cows to come home. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And, You're more about the stock. I get And no judgment yeah. by any means no. on anybody. This is not, I, you know, I get it. And I'm like with whitetails, it's, you know, it's a similar thing. Right. But, yep. um, I just, I don't know. To each their own, man. I we've, like to chase stuff. We've got our interconnections now. Yeah. With Africa. Oh, yeah. We got a few. So. We got a few. Still doesn't make it cheap. No. Because I know if I go, I'm going to kill everything. Because <laughs> I probably only want to do it once. So I'm just going to oh, everything I can. Yeah. And now, you got, now you've got all those animals. You got to get back. All the taxidermy. All that yeah. kind of stuff. So. Go for broke, dude. That's yeah. the only way you can go. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So. Someday. Well, Rory, thanks for hanging out at the range, man. Uh, we plan to have you on some future episodes with some upcoming product launches, that kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on and, and, you know, taking time out of your day, you know, coming up from Cancun for the day. To- <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, I appreciate you guys. Um, thanks for having me on. Um, pretty exciting stuff here. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to future episodes, man. Thanks again for being here. Absolutely. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, suggestions, or has any interest in being a guest on the range podcast, you can uh, reach out to me on Instagram at ricky.bruley80 or shoot me a message through our Vapor Trail Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube channels. You can also find us at the range podcast on all major platforms. And where can uh, folks find you at Hollywood if they have any questions? Uh, Instagram is Jake Ivy three. And then Facebook is Jake Iverson Hollywood at the end. All right. Well, with that, we are going to pack up our bows and arrows and leave the range. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. Vapor Trail is now offering an exclusive discount to the range podcast listeners. Enter promo code TRP15. That's TRP15 at checkout for 15% off VTX bowstrings and Vapor Trail and Stoke Rise branded t-shirts, hats, and other gear.